theft, stealing, shoplifting, and organized retail crime in the USA alone cost approximately $13 billion annually. Many of my officers are performing their duties as loss prevention or asset protection agents dealing with theft, stealing, and shoplifting. Many facilities call it corporate security to investigate and interrogate corporate theft. There are two types of theft. One is uh, internal and the second one is external stealing. When working, be aware of your use of force policy. One must be properly trained to deal with theft. You must be aware of best practices. Theft comes from all ages, background, genders, and income brackets. You need to know why people steal. Approximately 3% steal because they are part of organized retail crime or organized shoplifting ring. Some steal in response to pressure in their lives because they have difficult time in life. Some steal because of money issues. Tough financial shape. It is a disease because of low self-esteem. They steal to make themselves happy and better. Some steal because they can't afford to fit in the society. These are perfection-minded people. Some steal because stealing become a part of their behavior and are addicted to stealing, which is also known as kleptomania. Some people might steal because they are on medication, known as antidepressants. And some steal because of mental health issues. It tells us that while at work, you will be dealing with variety of people with theft behavior. You chase suspicious customers and suspicious stuff. When it comes to internal theft, you will be dealing with cash register, fraud, sales fraud, return fraud, etc., etc., which cause lost in profit. I have dealt with situations where managers and associates were involved in stealing. Associates sometimes invite friends to steal. You will also notice situations where employees and managers work together to steal. That's why I always tell my staff, do your job to the best of your ability and not to be too friendly with staff. Your job is to prevent loss by using different tactics. Loss prevention or asset protection is all about appearance of control and awareness. One person watching the camera and one person on floor in plain clothes is not enough. That's why I always suggest owners to have a uniform personnel by the store entrance, which is a big detriment. You know, I remember a call from my coworker, Mr. Khan, who was working at a jewelry store. 
He told me, Major Salim, the manager is stealing from the store. Me and Mr. Khan were quiet and very careful. We gathered evidence because we knew the owner will not listen to us without an evidence. Owners, they always trust their managers. And if the manager knew that we are aware of their secrets, they could have come up with ways to get us fired and nothing could be done. We collected the evidence and uh, provided to the owner. Owner appreciated us very much and he was really thankful. Some might be thinking, what is organized crime? Actually, organized retail crime is where groups work together to make profits. Most of the time, items are sold on social media, pawn shops and neighborhood stores, etc. Most of the suspects are so sure that they won't get caught and they can easily fool others. Some suspects even get aggressive when stopped for professional shoplifting, financial fraud, or retail theft. While working, be aware of individuals with fraudulent behavior and individuals with legitimate behavior. While performing duties at retail, be aware of customers' clothing, accessories, their shopping habits, and eye movement. While performing duties, you will notice majority of suspects steal items under their street clothes. People wearing baggy clothing leaves lots of room underneath clothes to wear merchandise on their body. Also keep an eye on seasonal clothing, wrinkled clothing, and long enough sleeves. When it comes to accessories, Keep an eye on backpack under coats, carrying empty bags, carrying bags with other retailers, carrying old or wrinkled bags, carrying oversized purses, baby strollers with large carrying areas, wearing shades on cloudy day. And uh, when it comes to shopping habits, shopping habits consist of moving merchandise from one area to another. Actually, they are looking for a better area to steal. Keep an eye on people moving in an unusual manner. Also keep an eye on people shopping in the corners of the store. They are in the corner, so they have less visible area to look around to see if someone is watching them. Also keep an eye on people making unusual sounds. When it comes to eye contact or eye movement, you want to look for lack of hand-eye coordination. They look around, also try to fit the merchandise they're trying to steal. They will not look at the prices or sizes. They will pay more attention to the surroundings and people than merchandise. They will use rapid eye moment. Professional shoplifters will be in 
and out in few seconds. That's why I always suggest my clients to have a uniformed officer by the entrance, which is a deterrent to crime. Many thieves walk inside the store in groups, grab as much as they can and quickly leave. Many shoplifters will use heavy aluminum foil in the bag. They walk in the store and put expensive items inside the bag and seal it. When getting out, the sensors which detect theft in the store are defeated because of heavy aluminum and signals won't go off. While working, also keep an eye on return item counters. You will notice suspect returning stolen items and get store credit or gift cards. Don't be surprised to see people will take items to the bathroom, to the restroom and steal because there are no cameras. People will use magnets, tag guns to remove the tags or will just rip the tag off. Be aware of old school trick. Take number of items to the dressing room and uh, come out with less. Cameras are a great resource. Video evidence are very helpful to make a criminal case or make criminal cases. Awareness is the best step. You must know how to handle situations. When you see a suspect on CCTV camera, be aware of the situation, identify and communicate. When it comes to apprehension, make your best judgment and then take him or her into the interrogation room and contact local law enforcement. While using handcuffs, make sure your keys are working. <laughs> There are situations where suspect was handcuffed and detained. Unfortunately, the handcuff keys were not working. Eventually, fire department was called. You can see this. I mean, they cut it off. Eventually, the fire department, they were called by the local law enforcement to cut the handcuff. You don't need such embarrassing situations. You must know the rules of detaining someone in your area. Don't run into crazy situations outside of the rules, otherwise you will be dealing with legal or civil problems. If you handcuff, search them to make sure they don't have any weapons or if policies don't allow you, then just use metal detector if not allowed to search. When it comes to big groups, be careful not to get stabbed if you are not, you are not there to get hurt. It is better to con contact local law enforcement and never jump into suspect car to get him or her. Most of the time, victim will come up with excuses when you get them. They will say it was a mistake. They accidentally walked out of the store. But you must get their ID and good phone numbers. Receipt of how much merchandise was stolen and write all facts in detail. 
Local law enforcement looks at the video and or listen to your story and makes an arrest. They will leave it up to the court to decide. Penalties, they are based on the value of the property. Most of the criminal charges are misdemeanor. Unfortunately, in some situations, people can be charged as major felony crime. Please call us to receive a complimentary personal visit from a VSF security expert to discuss your security needs. Our phone number is 800 981 3113. Email info at vsfus.com. Or you can visit our website for more information at www.vsfus.com.